Long before they made the proposition together, John Hillcote and Nick Cave collaborated on Ghosts of the Civil Dead. You are creating a lot of angry men is what you are doing. And one day, those men are going to go out there, and that day, those people out there are going to pay for what you are doing in here. You remember that? You remember? You remember? That day, you are going to pay. You just remember that? <laughs> The film is quite difficult to find these days, but as a Nick Cave completionist, I knew I needed to track it down. Even on the official website for the film, it says the film is not currently available anywhere. And though the site hasn't been updated since 2008, that still hasn't really changed all that much. It isn't available to stream, rent, or purchase pretty much anywhere. Even on Amazon, the only listing is a VHS copy for over $85. And it's a shady VHS copy, by the way, that only has a DVD logo as its only image. I would not recommend trusting that option. Your best bet of seeing it is probably just to like scour video stores looking for an old DVD or VHS copy somewhere. Now there is a version of the movie floating around somewhere on YouTube, but that kind of thing isn't always guaranteed to stick around. As I mentioned in my review for his novel and the ass saw the angel, I am a massive fan of Nick Cave. Nick Cave in the Bad Seeds is tied for my favorite band of all time, and I love his work with The Birthday Party and Grinder Man as well. Plus, his film scores with frequent collaborator Warren Ellis are always incredible, and Warren Ellis' own band Dirty Three is quite good as well. Now, arguably Cave's most important collaborator on the film industry side of his career has been fellow Australian John Hillcote. Hillcote has a long resume of music videos to his name, including a couple of Bad Seeds and Grinder Man videos. He's also directed all of Nick Cave's scripts throughout his occasional screenwriting career. Lawless, which is pretty good, The Proposition, which is fucking excellent, and their first collaboration, Ghosts of the Civil Dead. But uh, be forewarned, there are no ghosts in the movie, and I had no idea why it was titled that way, even right after watching it. And by the way, I see this categorized as a horror movie, uh, pretty regularly, but that's it, this is not a horror movie. It's not making any attempt to scare you or creep you out. It is disturbing to an extent, but in the way that a good drama that showcases tough social issues can be disturbing, not in the way that a horror film is typically disturbing. But as for the title, Ghosts of the Civil Dead, I had to research its origin after the fact. What the title refers to is the idea of civiliter mortuus, which is probably mispronounced, but that's Latin for civil death, which is the concept of getting locked up in prison and having your rights stripped away to you being akin to dying a civil death while continuing to live a natural life. So the ghosts of the title aren't literal ghosts, but instead they refer to the inmates who have suffered this civil death through their incarcerations. I actually think that's a pretty cool way to relate the theme of the film in the title in kind of a heady way, even though it took a little Googling around afterwards for me to understand it. So yes, Ghosts of the Civil Dead is a prison movie, and that descriptor can be taken in a more literal context than your average prison movie. If you look at something like The Shawshank Redemption or The Green Mile, those are great prison movies in that they are set in prisons, but at the end of the day, they're about people. Ghosts of the Civil Dead, on the other hand, is set in a prison and it's about prison. Prison as a concept, as an institution, as a form of inadequate rehabilitation and punishment. The people within the movie are thin sketches kept at an emotional distance, while the real main character is the prison itself, which is a maximum security institution known as Central Industrial Prison. The film is decidedly light on character or dialogue-driven exposition, opting instead to convey the vast majority of its necessary story information through a combination of on-screen text and voiceover narration. It's a bit of an odd choice, and one that has the potential to come off as clunky or even perhaps a little bit lazy on a storytelling front, but it ends up mostly working to the film's benefit. You might feel a bit cheated to have a title card to just tell you about a brutal murder that took place between two scenes and you don't get to see that murder. It's a pretty bold breaking of the show don't tell rule and it might have been instituted to get around some budgetary constraints, but the trade-off is that this cold and detached presentation style at times conveys something of a documentary-esque feeling as it progresses through a period of time several months long, and it contributes to the film's striking and off-kilter atmosphere. The characters are kept at such an extreme emotional distance at almost all times that when their personally vulnerable narration plays, 
It's a striking reversal, jumping to an internal perspective from one that was previously so detached that it viewed the prisoners as something less than human. Which I think is a stylistic choice intended to convey the way that prison guards and prison institutions at large dehumanize the inmates. This is a prison movie with a lot to say about the nature of prisons. Since it's an Australian-made movie, it is of course commenting on Australian prisons, but it is also commenting pretty strongly on the prison industrial complex of the United States, with many of the film's events being pulled straight from research the creative team did into United States maximum security prisons. The key thematic takeaways of the film are a thoughtful examination of the various forms of social control that govern the population, incarcerated or otherwise, and a special focus on the way that incarceration is not truly designed to rehabilitate the inmates, and in fact does quite the opposite hardening inmates and driving them into worse states, whether that be pushing them towards more extreme crimes, self-harm, or even a loss of their sanity. In watching the film, it's plain to see that these social commentary points are the real purpose of the film. This is a message movie, first and foremost, with characters and story holding only secondary importance. Ghosts of the Civil Dead almost comes across like a PSA or a message-driven documentary powered by reenactments rather than a typical narrative movie. Now that might be a bad thing, it might be a good thing. Your mileage will vary on whether or not this approach works for you. Personally, I find this approach bold and quite effective at conveying its points, but I still could use a little more character to latch on to. This is not a standard viewing experience. It's a little more avant-garde than you might expect, which makes it feel a little bit special. This atypical narrative approach is balanced out by its unflinching portrayal of some hard-to-stomach events. John Hillcoat and producer co-writer Evan English completely self-financed the film, which gave them total creative control and ensured they didn't need to pull any punches when it came to the subject matter, message, or censorship. It's a brutal, unflinching film. The movie had five writers, which is kind of insane. Usually if a movie has more than two screenwriters, I take that as a little bit of a red flag, but I would be curious to hear a breakdown of exactly how the writing was divided in this particular case, since there's so little characterization and dialogue and things play out a bit more like a beat-by-beat -beat rundown of events. If anything, it feels a little underwritten on the character and story side, which runs counter to the too many cooks in the kitchen sense that most films with so many writers have. Nick Cave was one of these five writers, and he's also in the film, his first acting credit and his first screenwriting credit. Given that it's his face on the poster, you might expect him to be the main character, but that is not the case. He's a side character who enters the film rather late, but he definitely leaves an impression with his limited screen time. His role essentially consists of nothing more than laughing maniacally and screaming the most offensive obscenities he can conjure up at any moment. Ghosts of the Civil Dead is an interesting film with something to say about an important subject. It has a distinct presentation that is purposefully alienating. I wouldn't call it the most enjoyable viewing experience, but it is kind of fascinating, and it's absolutely worth a watch for fans of Cave, Hillcoat, or anyone interested in some thought-provoking social commentary on the subject matter of incarceration. If you can track down a copy, that is. Thanks for watching. You can subscribe right here to check out more of my stuff. So long.